So we've had a MEA trade season here for a little bit. We had the OG and Anobi trade, but now we're getting to the point where like big time names are available. We're getting real concrete rumors about where some of these players are gonna end up here pretty soon. And right now this feels like a very exciting deadline. There's a lot of rumors out there and I think there's gonna be a lot of guys move. There's a ton of teams that are kind of in an in-between situation where they need to shake up the roster. There's a ton of parity throughout the NBA right now. So if you're someone that's looking for and looking forward to a very active trade deadline, I think this is the trade deadline for you. First guy I want to talk about is DeJounte Murray. We talked about him not too long ago in terms of the possibilities of him going to the Lakers, things like that. New information on DeJounte Murray because when I saw that he initially was available for trade, my first thought was, okay, they're trying to split up the Trey Young DeJounte Murray thing. It just doesn't work. But now we're getting information that all it might take to get him is salary filler and a first round pick. Keep in mind, this is a guy that Atlanta traded multiple firsts for not that long ago. And now they're willing to just move on from the entire entire situation for salary filler and a pick who knows how true that is or or you know if they were actually going to be expecting more how much they actually want to move to Jante Murray but that's the information that we have right now in that context opens up like half the league to possibly trade for Dejounte Murray the Knicks have been mentioned as an option to pair alongside Jalen Brunson the Nets have been has have been mentioned as a team that desperately needs a guard and I think it's clear that Dejounte Murray represents a significant guard upgrade for a good amount of teams but clearly based off the value that Atlanta is hoping Hopefully expecting his market has cooled down significantly since Atlanta made that move a couple of years ago. The Lakers are of course involved, but that that piece of information of what kind of value Atlanta is hoping to get in exchange for DeJounte Murray means that one, he is very, very available. And two, there are a lot of teams around the league that would be a, a, able to, to potentially meet that price. And so it feels like DeJounte Murray could go to the Knicks, the Nets, the Lakers, the Sixers, the Kings, half the teams around the league basically could trade for DeJounte Murray. Speaking of someone that's very available Pascal Siakam the new information that we have for him is that it is basically guaranteed that he is going to be on a new team before the trade deadline because he is an expiring contract it's a completely different situation than Murray uh, he's on an expiring contract and he's going to have a lot of control over what his future looks like uh, apparently Indiana is a big time threat to possibly sign him away in free agency they would they would offer him a max contract right now if they could so clearly Toronto is nervous about him leaving a free agency they're very very far apart in terms of contract extension talks and so that means Siakam is almost 100% going to be on a new team and the list of teams he could go to is limited to places that Siakam actually wants to go Philadelphia has been mentioned the Lakers and Warriors have kind of been mentioned but especially for the Lakers from a from an asset standpoint that feels difficult and for the Warriors it's cool but from a fit standpoint with Kaminga and Draymond already there that's definitely a little bit weird we had some Sacramento buzz for them you know as it relates to Siakam about a week or two ago but it seems like either he doesn't want to sign an extension in Sacramento so they don't want to give up a ton or as we're going to talk about later Keegan Murray was just completely off the table which meant that Toronto was not interested so I'm really interested to see where Siakam's value eventually falls because he's really good but he has so much control over where he goes and so his value might actually be lower but Toronto would still be willing to trade him even for lower value because of the expiring contract situation next up speaking of the Warriors which I talked about a little bit with Siakam they are officially at the point now where reportedly every player on the roster that isn't named Steph Curry is available for trade. That includes Jonathan Kaminga, who we got some rumors about a week, week and a half ago about him not being super happy with his role in Golden State. That includes Draymond Green, who's going to be returning to the team. That includes Klay Thompson, who they've been hesitant to move because of sentimental reasons. That includes everybody on the roster. Andrew Wiggins is an option as well, which is super, super interesting to me because I don't know what has happened to him since they won the title, since they you know went to the finals and he was a huge, huge part of that team. Beating Boston in the finals, he was incredible. It was a rebound rebounder in that series he was confident that whole season he started in the all-star game and now he's like barely a role player out there it's a very weird situation in Golden State and I'm just I I'm happy and I'm excited that they have made the decision that they are open to trading you know pretty much everybody because that's the reality of the situation and they have been hesitant to get to that point because of you know sentimental reasons not wanting to break up this this core of Draymond and Clay and all these guys and honestly Draymond feels unlikely as a trade candidate right now because he's just now returning to the team and then to immediately turn around and trade him, not to mention what would his value actually be considering he just signed this new contract and some of the issues that he's had this year. But the more interesting part of this is it seems like a guarantee that Golden State's roster is going to look maybe not significantly different, but definitely different in some way once we get beyond the trade deadline. And as a trade team, they are one of the more interesting teams in the entirety of the NBA to me.
Next team to talk about is Sacramento. We mentioned them briefly earlier as it relates to Pascal Siakam. They seem motivated to do something. They're right about where they were last year in terms of on pace for their number of wins, but they've been a little bit shakier at times, especially defensively. And I think they want to add another piece alongside Fox and Sabonis to kind of help a little bit with, you know, some of the offensive responsibility those guys carry because Kevin Herter hasn't been as good this year. Malik Monk has been kind of in and out of the lineup. Uh, their offense in terms of the other guys has been a little bit less potent. So it seems like they want to add a piece. Siakam was mentioned as we talked about earlier in the video, but either there's an extension issue there or they don't want to trade Keegan Murray. That seems like a critical talking point for them is that Keegan Murray is not available. They want to keep him and they want to add someone else alongside their core of Fox, Sabonis, and Murray, which to me makes a ton of sense. I'm not really sure who that guy would be at this point. Rumors seem a little bit, you know, kind of iffy on the exact player they'd like to add. They've been a Levine team in the past, uh, offering him a restricted free agent contract a handful of seasons ago. So that's always a guy to keep an eye on for them. DeJounte Murray, I feel like is a little bit of a sleeper, you know, option for them as well. Sacramento seems committed to making a deal and keeping Keegan Murray out of the deal. Next up is a guy that we haven't actually got a ton of rumors about lately, and that's Donovan Mitchell. Cleveland's been weirdly good since, since Evan Mobley and Darius Garland went down. Jared Allen's been playing out of his mind. Some of the other, you know, wings and stuff been guarding and shooting really well, and Donovan Mitchell has been enough for them offensively. They haven't been, you know, outstanding by any means, but they've been good enough that they've kind of cooled off all of these rumors about the possibility of Donovan Mitchell getting traded before the deadline. Now that can always change and he can always look around and say, the only reason this team is any good is because of me and because I'm playing well. That's definitely a possibility and I still wouldn't be surprised if Donovan Mitchell is on another team before the deadline. But it seems like at least for the mid-season aspect of this, it seems like things have cooled down in Cleveland surrounding Donovan Mitchell. Still gonna be something to keep an eye on in the off season. He is a 2025 free agent. So Cleveland does still have time to figure this out, which potentially could be motivating their decision-making process here. He's not gonna sign an extension. So it's something they're going to have to deal with at some point. But in terms of before the deadline, it seems like that has kind of gone away for now. But a team that does seem to want to make a move is the Indiana Pacers. We talked about them a little bit with Siakam earlier in terms of having the cap space to potentially sign him in the offseason. They've been active in free agency in the past. They tried to get DeAndre Ayton not too long ago. But it seems like midseason, Indiana wants to make a move. But there's weirdly, there's been some Matherin buzz around them. I don't know why they would want to trade him, but there's been some buzz there. They want to keep, you know, a good amount of their young core intact, but they're willing to make a move to add a piece. They feel like they're good this year. They love what they have with Halliburton and they don't want this to just be a, you know, feel good season for them. And they definitely want to add to their group. They've got a ton of assets. They've got a ton of young players that I think teams would be interested in. Maybe they just go ahead and make the Siakam move to get a head start on that and then potentially just go ahead and sign him to an extension. That's possible. But right now it seems like Indiana is just a team to keep an eye on as a possible adding team at the deadline. That's kind of the roundup, all the rumors that we have right now. Of course, things can always change as we get closer and closer to the deadline, but I can't wait because it feels like a very active situation. Lots of teams, lots of players possibly involved in some moves here over the next handful of weeks.